Hi guys, I hope you are doing well. Here we are continuing our lecture series on irrigation water management. You can follow me on Instagram or Telegram to get notification related to our video lecture series. So the links are in the description box. So let's start it. So the first question is to avoid percolation loss, which of the following materials should remain at the bottom of the layer? The options are clay, gravels, sand, or fine sand. So the correct answer of this question is gravels. Okay. So why it is so? So when two layers of soil is there and the top layer of soil contains the finer mat materials like clay like materials and the bottom layer of the soil contains coarser texture materials okay like sands and gravels. So what happens? When we add water to the top layer, so in what direction water will move? Okay, in past classes, we have already discussed that water always moves from lower soil water tension to higher soil water tension that we have already discussed. And which soil has lower soil water tension? Coarse, coarse texture soils like sand or gravels, they have lower soil water tension as compared to clay or heavy texture soil, which has higher soil water tension. In this case, the top layer has higher soil water tension, that is the finer materials, and the bottom layer, that is the coarser materials, that has lower soil water tension. So always water moves from lower to higher soil water tension. So when we will add water to the top layer, so, so definitely water will not move to the bottom layer due to this tension difference. So what will happen then? the water will start accumulating here. Either it will go or it will flow laterally or it will accumulate here. And when the sufficient amount of water will accumulate in the top layer, when the moisture content increases, then the soil water tension will reduce. So when this soil water tension is comparable with this soil water tension, that is, the reason, that is when the water will start moving towards the bottom. So normally when we are adding water, water will not move towards bottom due to this coarse texture materials that is present at the bottom. So that is the reason why purling is done. So during purling process also, purling which is done in rice cultivation during purling process also, when the soil material is mixed well in presence of water, so coarse materials like sand, okay, these materials settle faster in the soil okay after that medium medium size particle like silt will be settled and lastly the finer particles like clay like particles they will settle at the top so due to this only puddling is done to avoid the percolation loss so this principle is the main reason of puddling and puddling is based on this principle and another practical example is in golf course okay where golf is played so at that place also gravels are placed at the beneath of the golf, golf course okay and above the top portion finer particles are kept okay then why water will not move from higher higher side to lower side okay when we are adding water that is different but when normal this course or tank, uh, sand uh, texture soil also also having some water why this water will not move in upward upper direction that reason we have already discussed in the ink bottle effect okay during ink bottle effect of hysteresis i have already discussed that during drying pore process when these uh, larger pores larger pores means sand or coarse texture soils have larger pores here so larger pores are present at the bottom and finer particles are present and the finer pores are present at, at, at the top okay so during this uh, time when water will start drying so it will not move due to the blockage of this small small pores so water will not move from bottom layer to the top layer okay so that is the reason why always gravel or sand particles or coarser texture particles are placed at the bottom layer and finer particles are placed at the top layer i hope it is clear now then coming to the next question that is which method of soil moisture determination is considered as the standard method for obtaining soil moisture content. 
ओके द ऑप्शन आर फील एंड अपियरेंस मेथड ओवन ड्राइंग मेथड अल्कोहल बर्निंग मेथड और टेंशियोमेट्रिक मेथड सो द करेक्ट आंसर ऑफ दिस क्वेश्चन इज ओवन ड्राइंग मेथड ओके ओवन ड्राइंग मेथड is considered as the standard method because many direct methods are based on this oven drying method then what is that oven drying method so it is a very simple method in which we first sample soils okay soil samples are collected and this soil sample is placed in a hot air hot air oven okay at 105 degree celsius for 24 hour okay so after placing this in the oven after 24 hours all the moisture will be vaporized okay after that the dry soil oven dried soil is collected from the oven and the dry weight is taken okay so after sampling soil we have taken here the fresh weight so here fresh weight is there dry weight is there so using formula we can calculate the moisture content okay so moisture content on weight basis is fresh weight minus dry weight divided by dry weight into 100 okay so this is the formula so using this formula we can estimate the soil moisture content so it is very simple and this oven drying method is normally uh, used for basis for other direct method so that, that what are other direct methods that uh, that we will also discuss so here another important thing is that during this oven drying method soil moisture can be expressed in weight basis that is mass basis or volume basis so we we have already already discussed this on volume basis the soil moisture content on moisture content on volume basis is equal to moisture content on mass basis into ball density okay we have already discussed this so this volumetric moisture content is the standard uh, standard method of expression okay this can be a question that in generally in which basis the soil moisture is expressed so the common method of expression is volumetric water content or volumetric moisture content okay so the standard method is oven drying method and the common method of expression is on volumetric basis okay then what are these things fill and appearance method so fill and appearance method is very simple and very old age practice this is commonly practiced by the farmers to schedule uh, schedule the irrigation so the accuracy level in fill and appearance method is only 5 to 10% then what is this alcohol burning method alcohol burning method is the quickest method okay remember this thing it is the quickest method of soil moisture determination and generally 1 ml of alcohol is used for spirit is used for gram of soil if the soil is at fill capacity if soil is at fill capacity then 1 ml of alcohol is used for 1 gram of soil and if soil is at permanent wilting point then 0.5 ml alcohol is used per gram of soil so after adding alcohol then it is fired means it is burnt and after that the soil is left without any water and then the estimation is done using this oven uh, using this same formula this formula is known as gravimetric formula okay gravimetric method gravimetric method okay so using this formula it is used means here this thing and this thing is similar okay the process is similar but here we are using an oven to dry the soil and here we are using alcohol burning method to dry the soil so what is tensiometric method that we will discuss later then coming to next question that is which of the following method is a direct method of soil moisture determination tensiometer gypsum resistance plug give some sorsen plug or newton scattering technique okay so here the correct answer of this question is give some sorsen plug then what is this give some sorsen plug so first we will understand what is direct method direct method we have already discussed that it is the method which is used to estimate the soil moisture directly using the gravimetric method okay so here gypsum plug method is a gypsum plug is installed in soil 
and this gypsum plug will absorb water in it after that the fresh weight of gypsum plug is estimated okay fresh weight is estimated or measured after that gypsum plug is dried then dry weight of gypsum plug is taken then using same formula that is fresh weight minus dry weight divided by dry weight into 100 is used for determination of soil moisture content then what is the indirect methods of soil moisture determination indirect methods are those which estimate some other parameters which are related to soil moisture content means they don't estimate directly soil moisture content rather they estimate some related parameters which are related to soil moisture content and from these parameters soil moisture is estimated like tensiometric method in tensiometer we estimate soil water potential or soil water tension okay which is related to soil moisture content in gypsum resistance block method we estimate the electric resistance we estimate the electric resistance and which is related to the soil moisture content and in neutron scattering technique you est uh, we estimate the slow neutron counts and which is related to the soil moisture content so these methods are indirect methods whereas alcohol burning method oven drying method gypsum sorption plug method these are the direct methods of soil moisture estimation then coming to the next question that is which of the following is known as erometer so the correct answer of this question is tensiometer is also known as erometer why because tensiometer is widely used to schedule the irrigation that is the reason why tensiometer is known as erometer okay then what is this tensiometer tensiometer is an instrument which is major which is used to measure soil water potential or soil water tension then how tensiometer measures soil water potential or soil water tension so normally tensiometer is consists of a pipe or a tube and at the top of this pipe a porous cup is there okay porous cup is there and one opening is there using which we can fill the water inside the tensiometer and one vacuum gauze is also there when tensiometer is placed in a dry soil okay when tensiometer is placed in a dry soil water is coming out from this tensiometer to the soil to maintain the soil water equilibrium and when the soil is wet then water enters into the soil and enter into the tensiometer cup to maintain the soil water equilibrium and it means that due to moisture content of soil okay due to moisture content of soil the water level inside the tensiometer changes okay if it is dry soil then water level inside the tensiometer will decrease and if it is wet soil the tensiometer water level will increase and depending on this water level or water content inside the tensiometer there will be change in vacuum inside the this tensiometer if water level decreases then more amount of vacuum will be created okay if water level increases then less amount of vacuum will be left okay and this vacuum quantity is always measured by this vacuum gauge and this vacuum gauge indicates the potential or soil water potential or soil water tension so this is how the tensiometer works remember one thing tensiometer never measured the osmotic potential this is because the salts cannot penetrate this porous cup as a result salt will not affect the water quantity inside the tensiometer cup or tensiometer tube that is the reason it is not affected by salt content hence tensiometer measures only soil water potential or soil water tension and it remains unaffected due to salt or osmotic potential then coming to the next question that is tensiometer works satisfactory up to dash bar the options are 0.5 0.33 0.85 0.85 or 1 5 15 so the correct answer of this question is 0.85 bar this is the reason why tensiometer is used for sandy soil only okay this is another question tensiometer works satisfactorily in which soil the correct answer of this question is sandy soil so why tensiometer measures up to 0.85 bar 
this is because when the pressure is 0. Point, more than 0. 0.85 bar ar penetrates into the tensiometer porous cuff as a result this will affect the reading so that is the reason why the upper limit of this tensiometer is 0. 0.85 85 bar and it is suitable for sandy soils this is because in sandy soil mostly 60 to 80 percent of total available water remains within this limit okay so using tensiometer we can estimate 60 to 80 percent of available water in sandy soil but in case of clay soil only 35 to 45 percent of available water remains within this range and we cannot get satisfactory result in case of clay soil then how tensiometer reading is taken so tensiometer range of tensiometer reading is 0 to 0.85 bar and generally it is expressed in centibar okay so the range of tensiometer reading is 0 to 85 centibar 0.85 bar is 85 centibar okay that is cb centibar okay so here the tensiometer reading is 0 to 85 centibar and generally for for decreasing one centibar reading one mm irrigation is applied so for example if the tensiometer reading is 35 centibar then it means soil is drier and we have to apply 35 mm irrigation water to recharge the root zone one degree temperature changes then tensiometer reading is affected by 8 millibar so remember this thumb rule that one degree change in temperature affects the tensiometer reading by 8 millibar okay then coming to the next question that is tensiometer measures soil water potential or osmotic potential soil water tension or soil water content or both b and c so here the correct answer of this question is tensiometer measures only soil water potential or soil water tension okay it does not measure soil water potential or soil water content after estimating soil water potential or soil water tension the soil water content is estimated indirectly then coming to the next question that is a numerical problem related to tensiometer so here the question asks that Calculate the soil moisture tension if the manometer reading is 33.94 cm and the depth of installation of tensiometer is 30 cm and the height of mercury in manometer cuff above ground is 10 cm. So here the question is simple. It has given the manometer reading. Okay, the question has given the manometer reading and the manometer reading is 33.94 cm. We have to convert this nanometer reading to the soil water tension because ultimately we have to measure the soil water tension. But in tensiometer, the manometer reading is showing 33.94 centimeter. So in this case, first we have to correct this manometer reading. This manometer reading that is shown here, 33.94, is not the actual manometer reading because the manometer reading is affected by the depth of installation and the height of mercury in the manometer as compared to the ground level okay so here we have to use one correction factor and this correction factor is the formula of this correction factor is depth of installation plus height of mercury column as compared to ground level okay height of mercury column as compared to ground level divided by density of mercury and the density of mercury is 13.6 so this is the formula of the correction factor here the depth of installation is 30 centimeter plus height of mercury in manometer cup above ground is 10 centimeter divided by the density of mercury that is 13.6 so it gives around 2.94 centimeter okay so it is 2.94 centimeter so the correction factor is 2.94 centimeter then what is the actual manometer reading then so the corrected or actual manometer reading is corrected or actual manometer reading is the manometer reading that has given minus the correction factor okay so 33.94 minus 2.94 so the correct uh, corrected manometer reading is 31 centimeter okay 
so here it is simple the question has given 33.94 cm is the manometer reading but due to its installation depth and height of mercury in the manometer it is the it is not the actual manometer reading so to get actual manometer reading we have calculated the correction factor and then we calculated the correction manometer reading or corrected manometer reading by subtracting this correction factor from the given manometer reading okay so it is the 31.31 .31 cm so now we have to calculate or we have to convert this 31 cm reading to the soil water tension so how we'll convert this because we have known that one atmospheric pressure is 76 cm height of the mercury column so this is the practical example or practical use of tensiometer in scheduling the irrigation then coming to the next question that is tensiometer reading should be taken in early morning or midday or evening or night so the correct answer of this question is tensiometer reading should be taken during early morning why this is because tensiometer reading is generally affected by the temperature it is the standard thing one atmospheric pressure is 76 cm height of the mercury column so it means that 76 cm of height gives us one atmospheric pressure okay so 1 cm will give 1 by 76 and here 31 cm reading will gives us 1 by 76 into 31 so the correct answer of this question is 0.4 atmospheric pressure okay this is a very simple calculation but here we have to calculate only the correction factor after that it is simple so here the correct answer of this question will be 0.4 atmospheric pressure then coming to the next question that is dash method of soil moisture determination is based on electrical conductivity principle the correct answer of this question is gypsum block then what is this electrical conductivity principle so this principle says that the conductivity of electricity is directly proportional to soil moisture content whereas the resistance is directly pro inversely proportional to the soil moisture content okay so electrical resistance is inversely proportional to the soil moisture content if soil moisture content is higher then the resistance will be lower and if soil moisture content is lower then electrical resistance is higher so this gypsum block consists of two electrodes and these two electrodes are placed parallel to each other and these two electrodes are connected to a wire and this wire is connected to wheatstone bridge or soil moisture meter okay so reading will come in wheatstone bridge or soil moisture meter so the resistance uh, the resistance reading will come here okay so when this gypsum block is placed inside soil okay this is the gypsum block when it is placed inside soil then if soil moisture content is higher then soil will try to penetrate the gypsum block okay it will enter the gypsum block to maintain the equilibrium and when the moisture content in gypsum block will increase it means the resistance will decrease so here the reading of resistance will decrease. what is the unit of resistance the so ohm is ohm is the unit of resistance okay so it has been seen that for field capacity that is 0.33 atmospheric pressure at this uh, at this uh, soil moisture constant means at field capacity so the reading of wheatstone bridge or soil moisture meter is 400 to 600 ohm okay if the reading is 400 to 600 ohm then we will know that the soil is at field capacity and if the reading is between 60000 to 70000 ohm so the soil moisture is at permanent wilting point okay so it is clear now if the reading is lower it means the soil moisture content is higher and if reading is higher then soil moisture content is lower so it indirectly measures soil moisture content because it measures the soil moisture resistance or electrical resistance and it correlates electrical resistance with the soil moisture content okay and normally this gypsum block the life span of this gypsum block is 5 years normally this life span of this gypsum block is 5 years but instead of gypsum block nylon block or fiber glass block can also be used and in this case the life life span increases nearly about 
nearly about 10 years okay but the problem is in this method is that in gypsum block method or when you use gypsum block it can operate satisfactorily even under saline condition up to 0.2 percent salts but this nylon and fiberglass method this is satisfactory up to 0.1 percent salts then another question is that gypsum block method of soil moisture determination is not suitable for dash soil so the correct answer of this question is it is not suitable for sandy soil then why gypsum block method is not suitable for sandy soil because the reading of this gypsum block method or the range of soil moisture within which the gypsum block method was satisfactory that is the one atmospheric pressure to 15 atmospheric pressure and most of the soil most of the available water in sandy soil lies within less than one atmospheric pressure so that is the reason if we will use the gypsum block in case of sandy soil it will not work satisfactorily but nylon block can work satisfactorily because nylon block measures 0 to 2 atmospheric pressure okay whereas fiberglass measures 0 to 15 atmospheric pressure so it is clear gypsum block measures 1 to 15 atmospheric pressure nylon block 0 to 2 atmospheric pressure fiberglass 0 to 15 atmospheric pressure but the lifespan of nylon or fiberglass is higher as compared to gypsum block method but under saline soil gypsum block uh, method works satisfactorily as compared to nylon or fiberglass method so this is all about today's lecture don't forget to like the video and give your valuable suggestions and feedbacks in the comment section thank you for listening god bless you all